Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. I'm here in the studio with Larry Brown, Cape Cod Academy faculty member and concert director for the annual concert Shelter from the Storm, and two Cape Cod Academy students, Emily Brady, who is concert director for Shelter from the Storm, and Addie Terry Welsh, who is concert director in training, and they are part of the organizing team for this special event. Now, this is an event put on as a benefit for local nonprofits. Welcome to all of you to the show. Thank Thank you you for having us. Let's start by telling listeners what Shelter from the Storm is and when it is so people can mark their calendars because I know this is a very special event. Larry? Uh, Shelter from the Storm gets the best high school singers, dancers, and musicians from all the schools across Cape Cod. And we meet in concert for the homeless and for vets. Uh, The event is February 13th, Friday the 13th at 7 o'clock at the Tilden Arts Center at the Community College. And how did this idea come about? Because I remember when you did your first one a number of years ago. That that started uh, eight years ago when when schools on Cape Cod organized uh, the uh, Human Rights Academy. This was uh, part of the Human Rights Foundation that started this thing. And they challenged each school that was, and all the schools are in it, to do something that would either raise awareness for some issue or to actually help. And we've been doing benefit coffee houses at the school for 28 years. And so we got this idea, let's do like a mega coffee house, but get entertainment, get entertainers from across the Cape and get the best, the best singers and dancers and musicians we could get. Uh, We fed the Noah shelter for four months with the proceeds from the first one that we did. And the performances were fantastic. And we've never looked back. We're still doing them. And the money raised always goes to local charities, local isn't charities, that right? Yes. And where it's called Shelter from the Storm, at first it was really about homeless causes. And, and we broadened that to include Cape veterans also. And how do you choose the beneficiaries? I know the students are involved. Addie? We have a uh, people-to-people organization at our school, and the students involved in that group decide where the money goes each year from the concert and which organizations we choose to support. And how does that process go? Do you kind of sit around a a room and talk about different charities? Do you research them online? Yeah, uh, this year we had a list of charities presented to us, and we sat in a room and we discussed which ones we thought would be best helped if we gave them the money, and we decided to help. How many charities did we help? Eight different charities, and we also have uh, the, the kids ask people to come in and talk to them, so the heads of organizations come in and explain to them what they do and who they do it for. And so this year specifically, what are the eight charities that, uh, that are benefiting from the concert? Uh, we're helping the Cape Cod Council of Churches that does all kinds of wonderful work on, on Cape for the homeless. And it's very efficient in terms of the money they get. Almost all of it goes right back out in, in, into the community. Uh, M25, which is a very small organization, but these are people who go out in the woods on the most god-awful nights, and they bring stuff to the homeless people who are out there, sleeping bags and water, and, 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 and try and get them to come in. Um, and uh, Champ Homes, which does a, a wonderful work, and we're helping them. Uh, there is a shelter called Homeless Not Hopeless that uh, is staffed by formerly homeless people, and they have a very uh, good success rate. Uh, in getting people out, you know, back into, into housing, back into their lives. Um, Safe Harbor, which is a shelter for battered women and children, uh, and we already know that we're going to be able to totally rebuild one of their living units uh, to, from top to bottom. Um, and Children's Cove, which uh, assists kids who are victims of particularly sexual abuse or, or, or domestic violence. And 25% of all that we make will go to the Veterans Outreach Center in Hyannis to, to help local vets. And how much is usually raised every year? And I'm sure over the, the eight years of the concert, there's been quite a lot raised. Emily? 
Um, well, last year we were able to actually raise over ten thousand dollars. Wow, for this that's amazing! It was it was fantastic. And this past fall, we actually had money left over after funding a stand down this past summer, and we were able to distribute another nine thousand five hundred dollars between many of the charities on Cape Cod. And that's money that really makes a difference for a lot of local charities. It's a, it's a good amount of money. Has it grown every year? The amount that you've raised? Uh, it plateaued for a while between. Uh, Nine and ten, and this year we have an, a, a number of, of new donors who've joined, who've come in, and individuals send us what they can. Uh, but we also have some some uh, larger groups, Cape Air, um, Cape Cod Five Charitable Foundation, have been wonderful, and they've been with us from the beginning. Wendy's rents the place for us each time, um, and they've done that for eight years. Riddell and Sons um, uh, Plumbing have come in. The Delahunt Group, uh, Code Realty, uh, the family of State Senator Dan Wolf. Uh, and actually, the community of Cape Cod Academy uh, came up with a thousand dollars that we previously raised. So, um, so any, if anyone listening to this would like to become a godparent donor or would like to help out, period, um, just uh, contact Cape Cod Academy and make the check out to Cape Cod Academy and earmark it to the shelter from the storm, and then we collect all the money and then we cut the checks afterwards. Uh, every penny taken goes right back out. Now, this is really a production put on and organized by students. Emily, how does that all come together? (laughs) Basically, um, my job as student concert director is to find talent all across Cape Cod. Along with Mr. Brown, we go to different schools' talent shows. We hear through people in the CCA community and people outside about really good acts. And we go and see them. And it's basically an audition process for us when we go to see these kids. Or we have them come to us at one of our coffee houses. And then if we like them and think that they would be a good fit for shelter, we ask them to be in the concert. And this year we have a very, very good program. We've got some of the same kids that were in the show last year that are able to come back, such as uh, Cold Fever Band from Dennis Yarmouth, the Reaching Minimum Wage Band from Dennis Yarmouth, um, and Lauren Berkeley, who's a singer, songwriter, guitarist, pianist, she's amazing, from Sturgis. <laughs> And uh, so that's pretty much that's how we find the talent is we just do a blanket search pretty much every year. We have some kids come back, but we also try to fill the ranks with new kids. And it's really all student performers. It's absolutely all student performers. We do not um, look at anyone who has previously graduated from high school and we don't look at anyone who is not yet in high school. Um, and you've, na- you've named a few of the performances, do you, performers. Do you have the list of even more of them there in front uh, of you? Yes, I have some more. We've got Maria Girardin from Sturgis. We have um, Austin, who's a hip-hop dancer from DY. Emily Scipioni from Barnstable. Celie, Yep, who's, she sings opera. And Celie Magnus, who's actually Siobhan Magnus's younger sister, she sings opera as well, and she'll be, she's from Barnstable. Daniel DeRosier from Barnstable. John Santos, he's an amazing male vocalist from Barnstable. Alex Bernardo, who is actually a dancer from CCA. We're very happy to have her joining us this year. Uh, we've got Dance Designs, and Beth Walsh are both putting on productions for us. They've been with us from the beginning, which has been really neat. Yeah, and uh, we actually have the Cape Cod Conservatory Youth Orchestra is sending us their entire string section for this concert this year, which will be between 18 to 20 people. (laughs) It's such a wide range of styles of performing, as well as you have have music, you have dance. Um, So it's just a wonderful sort of compilation of student talent from across the region. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're talking about the annual concert put on by students called Shelter from the Storm. Now, the actual production is also manned by students. Is that right? Where you're backstage and throughout the production is all done by students. Emily, tell me about that. Or Emily or Addie. I'm sure, <laughs> which one of you is hand, handles well, that part of it? Right you now, do. as the concert director, I'm in charge of putting the show on, essentially, on the night of the show. Um, I run the backstage. I'm also the master of ceremonies. And that's what Addie's training to learn this year so that when I graduate, she can take over for me. Okay, and then and so how many students do you have backstage and working the performance and so There's forth? There's about, I think, five to six crew members that we have backstage. We try to keep it as minimalistic as possible so there's not a lot of congestion because some of our acts are very large, the youth orchestra, the dance studios that are coming. And so we want to try to make it as smooth and quick as possible. And too many people back there makes it way too cluttered. 
Now, Emily, you're a senior. You're graduating this year. And how long have you been involved in Shelter from the Storm? I've been involved in Shelter from the Storm since the beginning of my sophomore year. Um, Ben Taylor, who used to be the student director of the show, graduated two years ago. He decided that he wanted me to be his protege um, at the end of my freshman year. And so I began training for it at the beginning of my sophomore year. And Addie, now you're the protege of of Emily, I guess, learning yes. <laughs> learning everything, and and you'll re- you'll have her job next year. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I'm so, I'm in training to take over. <laughs> so you're a sophomore, and yeah. and how did you become involved in the production to begin with? Um, well, last year I started doing the coffee houses, and Mr. Brown asked me if I would be interested in helping out with shelter and training to be the um, student director. Student director. <laughs> And now you've also had performers from other countries involved in this. Isn't that, have have I read that somewhere? Yeah, two years ago we had a dance troupe fly over from India, a traditional Indian dance troupe, uh, and a a band from Brazil that came up who were really, really good. How did that all come about? Um, Just someone I knew when I was, and he's from India originally, and when I told him about what we did here, he got all excited. He makes money by doing tours. So... So I, his part of this was sort of like a travel agent for the for the whole school. But he pulled it off, and we got this really neat dance troupe, and they, they s- s- stayed with cope with local families for a couple nights, and they performed at the school, and they performed at Shelter. Uh, and Senator Dan Wolf came and gave each one of them a, a certificate for, of appreciation from the state, which meant a whole lot to them. Um, and uh, it was it was really a cool night. And you've had, if I recall, in past years, um, some Chinese dance as well mm-hmm. being performed. Yes, uh, we have a girl playing a uh, CCA uh, performer who plays the traditional two stringed violin called an erhu. Um, and I mean, she's really really good. You can close your eyes and imagine you're hearing the soundtrack of of Crouching Tiger. You know, uh, she's excellent. And we've had some good traditional Chinese dancers. And we have we graduated a fantastic dancer, and we have a new one in line. And next year, I think she'll be ready. Uh, we really hold the line on looking for the best on Cape Cod each year. And in terms of the, the Chinese performers, they're actually students at Cape Cod Academy. Is that right? You have a, a program on yes, that, Emily? Yes, we uh, have an exchange student program at Cape Cod Academy. We have about... 15 to 20 Chinese exchange students and every year after they grad after some of them graduate with the senior class another few come in to replace them and basically we try to integrate them into the community as well as we possibly can and many of them have become very good friends of mine and it's a really really unique and interesting experience to be able to s- kind of see a different side of um, daily life through their eyes because coming over here is a bit of culture shock for them. <laughs> but one thing they have in common when they come, some of them, is real artistic talent. And they're able to really share that right. with, through this performance yes. um, is, is a big sort and of a, a showcase. It's a multicultural festival as well. Yep. Now, this concert has also received some prestigious awards, I think I read somewhere. It received a couple of humanitarian awards and five congressional citations, uh, particularly for what we've done for vets over the last several years. So individuals who've been involved with the program have, have received citations, and the program itself, uh, the first year, uh, got you know, received one. So that's been a real honor to have our congressman uh, you know, give, give those. Absolutely. Now, where do people go for tickets? And I don't know if this sometimes sells out and so that people should really be concerned about getting tickets in advance, and, and how does that all work? Tickets are usually sold at the door when you get there. And um, so we don't really have a system for buying them ahead of time. It's purely just first come, first served. There is a balcony. So if we have overflow, we have a place to put everybody. And I think you normally do get quite a quite a big crowd at this event. Oh, yeah. Because all of the performers, and are there 20 or so acts? There are 20, yes. 20 acts, so it's it's quite an evening of quite a lot of performances. Does it go for a couple of hours, or typically how long does it's it go? It's a little shy of two hours. It's 7 to 8.30 to 9. Last year, Emily ran it down to the minute. I mean, literally, what, we, what, what we'd worked out, it, it ended there. And I'd say half the people who come now are are, are, are 
older people who don't have kids on the stage. They're just there because it's a really fantastic night of performance. It's not cute. It's adult-level good. Yeah, it's a, it's a real night of entertainment. Yeah. Now, Emily, I know you're a singer and performer. Do you perform during this event? I have performed previously, yes. And I believe this year I'll be singing the national anthem to open the show as well. But once I took over the duties as um, being the concert manager and running the show, it was a little too hectic for me to do an, a different performance. So. Now, and of course, this this concert has been going for, did you say, eight years? This is our eighth year. And so you'll continue, obviously. This is an annual event that, that builds on its success. I, I'm not ready to retire yet, and, uh, and, I, and I love it. Uh, there's nothing about it that is not beautiful. And you just need to be part of it. When you, when you organized the first one, I don't know if you were thinking at that point this is the first annual or you were just organizing this event and it was such a success that you said we'll do it again and then it just kept building from there? Or were you always planning that this is, this is something that we're going to keep doing year after year after I year? Think the first year we just wanted to see if we could do it and what would happen. Um, and someone from NOAA came back and, and got all the kids together after the concert and said, look, I'm not being over, over sentimental here. There will be people who are alive on Cape Cod next year because of what you've done. We, we had 30 homeless die on Cape Cod this year. I mean, there are people who are literally dying for help. Um, and churches are stressed to the max right now. Um, the recession may be over on Wall Street, but it's not over for thousands of families on Cape Cod. I think there's 15,000 families on, out, of, uh, out of work on Cape Cod. Um, there's a lot of people who need the help. And this, this amount of money, as, as we said before, it can really make a big difference with some of our local nonprofits. It's a big difference, and it also raises awareness on Cape of the needs in, involved. And a lot of people don't expect young people to care about this stuff, and, 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 and they do. Uh, and that's impressive to, to, to people as well. Um, I think the best people are getting better and the worst may be getting worse. But I think this is a better generation than mine. I'm, I'm old, by the way. Uh, so I grew, <laughs> I grew up in the 60s. And we complained about stuff and made some changes socially. But in terms of feeding people and putting roofs over their heads, um, this generation is much more proactive than mine was. And it's an honor to be part of that. And for you two young ladies getting involved with this, not only exciting to be involved in, in such a performing uh, uh, enterprise, but also this idea of the, the social work aspect of it. Did that attract you to it as well? Absolutely. Community service um, and helping the helping people in need has always been a huge part of my life. Um, ever since I was little, my parents have been bringing me to events that they were volunteering at and um, encouraging me to volunteer. So when this opportunity came up, being a performer anyway, um, getting to mix those two passions together, it just absolutely made sense. <laughs> How about you, Addie? And it's, it's a really good feeling knowing that the work that we're doing is really helping people and it's... It's helping the people on Cape Cod in our local community. So I really enjoy that. And for the last couple moments, just let's reiterate um, when the concert is and uh, the time and the day. Um, it's Friday the 13th of February, 7 o'clock at the Tilden Auditorium. and It's $5 for students and $10 for adults. And unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you all so much for being with me here today to talk about Shelter from the Storm. Thank you, all of you. Thank, Thank you for having us. us. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.